Hello, I'm Jen Fisher from Dr. Brittany Lestane's lab at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and I'm excited today to present application of transfer learning drug repurposing for glioblastoma. Glioblastoma is a rare brain tumor. It's the most common primary malignant brain tumor, has a poor prognosis of 10 to 15 months, and hard to diagnose early. Symptoms include headache, nausea, seizures, and raised intracranial pressure, but really depends on the location of the tumor. The causes of this disease are unclear, but the current treatment is resection of the tumor, radiation, and chemotherapy, which works in about 50% of patients, really indicating that there is a need for new therapies for this disease. So in this project, we're focusing on using a method called transfer learning. To explain the benefits of transfer learning, I'm gonna go through a toy example. Imagine we wanna build a classifier for different images of animals to see which animal is in that image. When we go to build a classifier with common animals where we have hundreds and thousands of images, we can create a very accurate model. However, imagine one day there's a special herd of zebra that come into existence and there's only a handful of them. When we go to build the same type of model with the common animals, it's less accurate. However, we can take the knowledge learned from the common animals about what's a hoof, what's a tail, and apply it to the zebra set model to create a more accurate model than if we were just to use the zebra data set. The idea with signature reversion is that we have gene expression profiles from disease and control individuals and we identify genes that are up and down regulated. And then we also have perturbation profiles from cell lines before and after treated to identify which genes go up and down with perturbation of a drug. Then we compare these profiles to each other, and we want to identify a profile that has the opposite signature to the disease. So in this case, drug 1 has an opposite profile to disease 1, so genes that are up and the disease are perturbed down by the drug. So for this project, the disease profiles are from the Cancer Genome Atlas glioblastoma project, and then in addition to the control samples from the TCGA project, um, control samples from GTEx brain tissue was also used. Then for the perturbation profiles, the NIH Lynx program dataset was used. And these were all used. In this project, we apply the transfer learning signature reversion principles to identify drug repurposing candidates for GVM. For this project, we took gene expression profiles from the Recount3 database, which includes the Cancer Genome Atlas and GTEx data that I've already mentioned and use that as inputs to the transfer learning multiplier framework, where dimension induction identified latent variables to be used in transfer learning to transform the tumor profiles and control profiles to, instead of looking at gene expression, we're looking at patterns of gene expression across these samples, and then use differential latent variable analysis to identify which patterns of gene expression is different between disease and control. Once identifying these different patterns, also known as latent variables, we use them to identify the top weighted genes for the disease signature and use that in the signature reversion principle to identify drug repurposing candidates for GBM. One of the first things we wanted to evaluate was how well transfer learning was transferring information. In this approach, the information is transferred by the gene labels. So if we were to switch these gene labels, our hypothesis was that the number of latent variables would decrease. And so with this analysis, we took GTEx brain frontal cortex and cerebral hemisphere samples and compared them with the transfer learning approach. With this analysis, we took a fraction of those genes starting at 10% and going to 100% and switching their labels. This was done 50 times at each interval. The average number of latent variables for each interval was then calculated, and then the average number of latent variables was used in a linear regression model to determine if there was an influence of the gene label and the number of latent variables, indicating that the gene labels have importance in the transfer learning approach. Another thing that needed to be evaluated is how well the significant latent variables were to able to separate disease and control, as this would indicate that it's picking up a disease signature and not a random signature. And so this heat map here is of the latent variable score. So those latent variables for each sample has a score um, based off the gene expression and the weight of the genes within the latent variables. And so the hierarchical clustering here of the samples show the tumor samples clustering to the left of the graph, 
while the normal samples are towards the right. Um, it's also interesting to see several pathways that are implicated in GVM, such as the Aurora B pathway, um, which also has been implicated in therapeutic response within GVM. So once identifying the significant latent variables, they were used to identify genes for the disease signature and applied to the signature reversion methodology. So this figure here shows the normalized connectivity score for the top candidates for GBM. And so the more negative this normalized connectivity score is, the more inverse the signature was of the drug. Also on this plot is the tau value, which describes the unique overlap between the disease signature and the drug signature. The more unique this overlap is, the more it indicates that it's perturbing specifically the drug signature, but also indicates that it's less likely to cause an adverse event by perturbing things that it shouldn't. Also interesting to note is that seven of the 16 candidates have been in clinical trials for GBM. And so we wanted to ask if this was more than by random chance. So what we did is that we randomly selected 16 other FDA approved drugs 10,000 times and asked the question how many of those drugs were in clinical trials for GBM as well. Um, and this was um, determined to be less than what we saw um, based off a one-tailed Wilcox test. In addition, we wanted to look at the PRISM database as they had screened several different cancer cell lines and looked at the sensitivity of these cell lines to different drugs. What they found was that for the standard treatment team of zeldamide, 75% of the cell lines were sensitive. And looking at our drug candidates, we wanted to see how many were equal to or greater than 75%. And several of the drug candidates are indicated by the yellow. In addition, we also evaluated this to random drug selection, looking at the medium log two fold change of the PRISM drug screen and found that ours was lower than by random chance. Lastly, we did a drug set enrichment analysis with the drug repurposing candidates to look at their drug targets and see what biological pathways they were a part of. And with this result, glioma was the top candidate, indicating that these drug repurposing candidates are perturbing pathways related to GBM. So in conclusion, when the gene labels were randomly switched, the number of latent variables from the transfer learning approach decreased as more gene labels were switched. This indicates that information about the genes is transferred in this approach. In addition, the transfer learning approach identified more drug candidates that are in clinical trials for GBM compared to random selection of other FDA-approved drugs. Lastly, in the cell viability drug screen PRISM, several drugs had equal or more GBM cell lines sensitive to treatment than standard treatment temozeldamide. The future directions for this project include testing the top candidates in patient-derived GBM xenograft cell culture systems to evaluate cell viability and other disease molecular phenotypes such as lipid droplet formation. Lastly, we plan to apply the transfer learning to other cancer contexts and rare diseases as well. And lastly, I want to conclude by thanking my lab, my committee, scholarship of the AMC 21, and also lab funding resources.